I hope you guys are having a great day. And if you are new to this channel, my name is Jeff, and this is where I share my personal passions for my personal gun collection, my passion for watches, and cars. I recently purchased a 2021 C8 Corvette in Rapid Blue, and currently it is not here. That's a story for another upload <laughs> very soon. But if you'd like to see the content of that C8, I will put a link in the description below. I want to thank all of you guys for your support, everybody who's been with this channel since the very beginning, and for everybody that is new, it means an awful lot. Uh, we have a wedding coming up very, very soon, so I'm trying to manage these uploads uh, as I can. But in the meantime, we're going to be talking about this beauty. Uh, this is my holy grail timepiece. I want to thank Kiva from Saxons, my boy. Man, you really hit it out the park for sourcing this watch. This will be my wedding watch. It is beyond special to me. This is a 2015 pre-ceramic 116520 Daytona. And a mint condition one of these. Currently, they're kind of hard to come by. So we're going to talk a little bit about why I decided to get this watch, what it means to me, and what is going on with the market on this watch. And right now, the market is insane for Rolex Daytonas. So uh, let's dive into it. If you like this content, like, subscribe, and share. That'll help YouTube share the algorithm with you guys. Uh, so when my uploads come up, you guys can see it. Algorithm, you guys, I might have messed that up. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Point is, it'll help YouTube share my videos with you guys when I have my latest uploads. Let's get to it. I will see you guys there. Kicking things off, we have a cameo appearance. This is my early 1970s Polaroid camera. I've had this most of my life. Classic camera, classic timepiece, both but very sentimental. So I figured, you know what? I might as well just put it in a video as well. So I hope you guys enjoy that in the background. This is going to be the 116520 2015 pre-ceramic Rolex Daytona, aka <laughs> the wedding watch, my holy grail. It, it doesn't get any better for me. Uh, some people like the ceramic dial, um, I'm sorry, the ceramic bezel, which is post 2015. Uh, I prefer to have the steel bezel for the simple reason it gives more character to the watch. What do I mean by that? Well, it's simple. It's going to sound a little ridiculous, but it means that this bezel can get scratched up. And every time it does, I will remember that moment, especially if it's a good moment. For instance, my GMT Master 2, I don't know if you can see it. It's got a pretty good scratch right here. And that came from my mailbox of my old home that I lived in for a long time, recently sold to have this home. So every time I see that scratch right there, it reminds me of my old place. Every little scratch counts. This is a GMT Master 2. This is my engagement watch. And believe me, that thing is worn down like you wouldn't believe. And this will be sooner or later. I don't abuse my watches, but I enjoy my watches. So this has an in-house movement, a 4130 70-hour power reserve. That is the sweet spot for me. If you have any kind of mechanical watches, specifically in Rolex, if you wear it a lot, it's really not that much of a big deal. But it is nice to know that you don't have to keep on winding the watch as much. So the 70 hour power reserve is perfect. Uh, lug to lug, this is going to be a 46.5 millimeter. And the thickness is going to be a 12.2. And it tapers down really nicely on those lugs. A lot different than the GMT Master 2. Much thicker lugs. So this is going to wear very, very comfortably on the wrist. Dare I say, this is the most comfortable watch I've ever owned in my life. Uh, it's, it's really hard to put into words in, until you actually see it. Uh, with that being said, being a 40 millimeter watch, it does wear a little smaller than say the GMT Master 2s. Uh, so when you first see this watch, if you are used to a GMT Master 2 or something similar, this may seem a little small to you. But for me, it's spot on. This has 904 steel and this is made by Rolex. It is proprietary steel on all their stainless steel watches, at least to my knowledge. Lug to lug will be 20 millimeter and it will taper down to 18, which is another reason why this watch feels so comfortable on the wrist. Working our way over to the clasp, it features a easy link system so you can do a quick release and it's about a link. Right now I have it open, fold it over, 
and then bam. I use this every single day that I'm wearing this watch. When my wrist gets hot, I'll go ahead and pop it open. There you go, release. If you're looking into purchasing any kind of Daytona, really, really, really do your research. Uh, later on, we're going to look into the market value of these watches. There are many, many things that change the value of these watches, so you got to be very careful. Uh, in particular, for this watch, the bracelet on this changed fourth quarter of 2009 to present. So if you want the older style bracelet, I believe it's called a hole punch. You'll see a little hole right here. Um, I've never experienced that bracelet before, but this is what I want it. So just be very careful what you're looking into. If you see a watch that has the 60 seconds over here by the nine o'clock position, that is going to be a Zenith. Uh, they do cost more because that is a Zenith movement and not a Rolex movement. It's a long story if it's something you're not really into, but it's something to keep in mind if you're looking into these watches. This particular model comes with screw down pushers. Uh, their previous models, depending on what year it is, some do and some do not come with screw down pushers. When they are screwed all the way down, including your crown, you will get 100 meters of water resistance. I do not plan on swimming with this watch, but technically I guess you could if you would like to. And just listen to this audible sound. Wow. And immediately you will see the conograph start running. And then listen to this reset. Wow. It feels really good, obviously, <laughs> as well as it should. And with the way this watch is designed, you can let the conograph continue on uh, while you're wearing it. Do I plan on doing that? No, but for the sake of this video, we can just watch it run. By the way, this did come with full box and papers. Uh, it has a open card. It simply means the card was not signed, but it did have a date on it. Again, this is a 2015, and you can also tell by the loom, this has a blue loom, which is my favorite. Does it make it more collectible? To some, it does. It may increase the price depending on who's selling the watch. For me, it doesn't matter. I'm not really worried about the price on this watch. As far as resale, right? Obviously, it's nice to know the value on this watch continues to grow. We will see that later on. But unless something tragic happens, this, this watch isn't going anywhere. Taking a closer look at this dial, you have an option in this year to have a white or a black. I chose black. Some people love white. It's all a matter of opinion of what you want. Depending on the day, the price may vary between a white dial and a black dial. Currently, the ceramic bezel versions of this watch, which is the newest iteration as of today, the values are insane right now. They're well into the 30s. We, we will see that later on. And the white dial seems to be selling for more. What does that mean to me? A whole lot of nothing. <laughs> I don't like the white dial. That's just my personal preference. I hope I don't upset anybody, but I love the black dial. Uh, the bezel, I, I love the fact that it's steel. It brings character to the watch. Again, this is something uh, that brings more, it, it brings more memories for me. It really does. Every time something gets scratched, I'm going to remember it. With these ceramic bezels, look, I love them. They're absolutely amazing. Uh, I would hate to chip it, and I would hate to pay for it if it did get chipped. Steel is a lot easier to replace. But hey, you know what? Ask me in a couple of weeks later, and, and I might change my mind. But taking a closer look at your sub dials starting at 9 o'clock, this would be your hours. And at 6 o'clock will be your seconds, and at your 3 o'clock will be your minutes. It is a little hard to read these depending on your eyesight. Um, for me, I really don't mind. I just can't get over the beauty of this watch. I know I said it a thousand times. Uh, they do relate this watch, obviously, to many, many things. A lot of people tie this into Paul Newman. Paul Newman is a legend in itself. Uh, I've been following Paul Newman Ever since I was a little kid, I saw the movie The Hustler, one of the best pole movies in the world. If you ever get a chance to check it out, it has Jackie Gleason in there playing Minnesota Fats. Um, and then you had Willie Moscone, who was a legendary professional pool player in his time, who taught Paul Newman how to shoot pool in that movie. So whenever I hear the name Paul Newman, I hate to say it, I don't really tie it to the Daytona, though he is one of the people that made this watch so famous. Obviously in 2017, his watch sold for roughly right around $17.8 million. Obviously that shook the whole world. 
But Paul Newman is more than just a person who wore this watch. He was an actor. The guy was extremely good at racing. I mean, all around, from what I understand, was just an all around good, humble person. And uh, he's missed. Obviously, I didn't know him personally, but he did impact my life. I, I started shooting pool for many, many years in the Pro-Am series. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen a hustler. So anytime I wear this watch, it reminds me of, of Paul Newman in, in that aspect. And then obviously the Daytona 5 heart, this is where this watch was generated from. Uh, I do have a race in history. I've been racing most of my life and um, it just brings back so many memories. So I am truly honored, honored to, uh, to have this watch. So guys, enough talking for me. Let's fast forward and see what the current market is and uh, hold your breath because it is pretty crazy. And as a reference point, I cannot recommend Saxo's Diamond Center enough. Uh, this is where my dear close friend Kiva works at. He is the lead salesperson when it comes down to pre-owned. As I mentioned before, uh, this is where I picked up my 116520, in this case 2015. Took Kiva a little bit to source out this watch because he's very meticulous and he's a huge fan of horology. So it's not just a salesperson trying to pick something out. But it means a lot to him to make sure he picks out the right watch and something he believes in. Uh, I, I can't emphasize that enough when you're looking for watches. So when you look through Saxa's Diamond Center, uh, click on Daytona. These will be all your different reference points uh, depending on what you guys would like to get. In this case, right here on the right hand side, uh, this is what I chose. And it will depend on what year you want in specific. So if you have a specific year or model type or something that's special maybe a different loom post 2013 on up oh, i believe the loom was a blue in the uh daytonas which is what this has so before 2019 i'm sorry 2013 i believe the loom was green i only mentioned this so if you're looking for something very specific in the watch so kiva knows this stuff like the back of his hand uh but i just want to show you guys saxon's diamond center with all the different options that you can pick out I would call him and I'll provide a information in the link description below and reach out to him and say, hey, you know, in specific what you want. And then he'll let you know uh, what your options are. With that being said, let's look around and see if we can find a post 2013 and good condition box of papers, uh, kind of where the market is for this watch or a 116520 in general. I could tell you that when I was looking for this and my buddy Kiva was sourcing this watch, it wasn't easy. Uh, it seems like a lot of people are holding on to this watch because they're waiting for the 7th of this month, which is Rolex's new releases and watches they're going to discontinue. So the 40 Daytona might be discontinued come the 7th. They might bump that to uh, 41. And uh, as we're about to see, the prices have already gone skyrocket for these time paces. So let's go over to David SW. Uh, they are a reputable place as well. Guys, keep in mind when you're looking at these watches, the one thing you need to think about is if you purchase your watch on a Tuesday for just to say $20,000 for the sake of argument, right? Uh, on Tuesday, that watch is now gone. That could be the last one they have in stock. Therefore, uh, that dealer, they're going to have to replenish that watch. So on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, whatever the next day may be that they're going to source this watch to replace it, chances are the value of that watch has already gone up. Uh, that's how crazy the market is for these Daytonas currently. Uh, you would ask, why don't you just get it from AD? It's not that easy, pretty difficult. So as we can see uh, on a rubber strap, these things are going for $43,000, which is crazy, but that's what they're going for. As long as ADs are um, going by the preferred customer base, uh, some people just cannot get these. So moving down to here, uh, we see the 116520. This is pretty much my identical watch. Uh, well, I haven't seen it in person, so that's, it's hard to say. But 2015 box papers, and you can see uh, what David SW is asking, right? Again, you, you can't uh, knock the sellers for their prices. This is the market value. Believe me, I've, I've done my research. So uh, you're gonna get your box and papers. Um, and you can look through their photos. Let's go ahead and get out of this for the 2015. It's again, this is kind of like hard to find in some places this actual year, right? So moving to your right, 
huge price difference. Now here's the thing, it says 2016, what does that mean? Well, they didn't make this watch in 2016 technically. This is fourth quarter of 2015, which lands into 2016. And if you take a closer look at this, it still has stickers on the watch and they are claiming this watch is unworn, new old stock, look at that price. I can tell you right now, it's gonna go nothing but up. I've been looking for a Daytona for about five years and I could tell you that previously, man, back in 2017, I, I was seeing these watches for 15,000 ish, right? Plus or minus, uh, more of a plus. And I was thinking to myself, that's crazy. I just don't want to buy into that right now. I really don't. And then a year goes by and the prices go up. Year goes by, prices go up. So looking at this box of papers, uh, new old stock, so it's considered. And you might think to yourself, well, this is absolutely insane. As you can see, sticker's still on there. But I can tell you that if you look around the market and these watches, they're not getting any cheaper. Uh, there's your stickers over here. So $35,875. That's crazy. But that is the market. And you don't see anything right now. What do you don't see in here? I'll tell you what you don't see. You don't see your Panda ceramic stainless steel. You don't. And black, black, or white. Now, why is that? Well, like I said before, come the 7th, they might be discontinuing a 40. So people are holding on to the, uh, in my opinion, the 40s, whether it's a ceramic bezel or stainless steel. That is my opinion. Now I'm not saying WSW or anybody else is doing that currently, but in my opinion, I think some people are wisely because the market is going to be sky high after the seventh, mark my words. So let's move over to Bob's watches. They currently do have a black black. And look at this price point. That's their wired price. And that's their regular price. Gotta keep in mind, this does not come with box and papers. It comes with a standard watch. I mean, a standard box from Bob's Watches. $28,000. And the prices just keep on going up, right? So let's see if we can find, uh, let's click on 2010 to present and, and see what we can find. If we can find anything close to a 2015, right? So here we have a 116520 and this is gonna be marked as a 2012. Let's go ahead and click on box and papers and it will dwindle, okay? So 2012, move on down. Box and papers for a ceramic bezel. Panda, 2019, look at that price. <laughs> $38,495. Again, this is just a reference point. This is the market, so you can't hate on Bob's watches or anybody else. Uh, this is what they're selling for, and believe you me, it's going to go up. We're working our way on down. Uh, here we go. Uh, 2002, this is on a waiting list, and this is it. Good luck with the post-2013 on up. At least what I wanted, which was in a steel bezel. Um, and I was very fortunate that to get a 2015, uh, aside from the fourth quarter of that, uh, this is the last model with that stainless steel bezel. I'm so very grateful. Uh, let's work our way to uh, Chrono24. Uh, this is something that people use as a platform. It is up to you if you want to use Chrono24 to purchase or not to purchase. I'm not going to dive into that, but just as a reference point, got to keep in mind, uh, authorized dealers are on here as well. And then you also have people that are throwing out prices. So you might want to take some of this as a grain of salt, but it's kind of a reference point to kind of gauge where they're at. So here is a Zenith Daytona. Again, this is a much older model. Zenith, is, Zenith models go up the roof. Uh, that's a review for a whole different subject. These are in different countries. So if you're looking for the US, you might want to go over to uh, your your tool on here and choose US spec and then, and then go from there what you're looking for. Uh, here's another one from the US. Uh, looking at this bracelet, it looks like it's gotta be post 2010. And um, let's see if they have a date on this watch or not. Again, there's your reference number, 116520. They're saying this is unworn, original box and papers. And look at that price. <laughs> so <laughs> you thought David SW was expensive. I mean, here you go. Um, 
it is completely up to you what you think is worth it and what's not. But I'm just trying to point a few things out here. Let's go ahead and look for a US spec because that's where I'm currently living. And um, APH, uh, this is going to be a error watch, uh, meaning that in the dial right here where it has the R and the A, there is a gap. So these watches are collectible uh, to some people for the 116520 where Rolex made a genuine mistake when they made this watch. So for collectors, it's kind of a big deal for me. It doesn't matter. But if you see a watch where it says APH on it, as you see up here in the title, that is what that means. So you see the gap between the R and the A. Uh, for collectors, they go crazy with this kind of stuff. So this one is box and papers. Uh, 30,500 uh, looks like this is from the US um, but yeah I'm just want to show you guys as a reference point of where this watch has gone it is just going crazy as far as prices so I am very thankful that I got my watch when I did I, I debated this for a very very long time um, and finally I decided you know what I'm gonna give my boy Kiva a call I'm ready uh, it's it's not gonna get any cheaper um, as I previously already expressed uh, as to why I did this and what this watch uh, means to me well guys this concludes my review of this stunning timepiece aka the wedding watch thank you all so much for tagging along like subscribe and I will see you guys at the next upload see ya